Hello, Tim Wilmot here, and welcome to another watercolour demonstration. This time I'm going to cover people and bicycles. Um, why bicycles? Well, I've done many paintings, videos with, with people. If you've seen my, my previous videos, uh, I always include people um, to add a little bit of extra interest and scale to a picture. So now I'm going to go uh, to the next level, up the ante, and include some bicycles. So why bicycles? Well, it adds another dimension to the scene, adds a little bit more interest, not just to have people have something, some, some sort of different uh, uh, modes of transport in there. Add, it adds movement to the scene as well, bicycles moving along a little bit quicker than people walking. And it can also help us with the composition and connecting different parts of the scene together. Now this video is free to watch but not free to produce. If you like uh, these videos please support me via Patreon at www.patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot. For a very small pledge I'll be able to bring you high quality full length watercolour tutorials and you can send me your paintings for a critique. Uh, plus lots of exclusive content that's not available here on YouTube. As I say, go, go up to my Patreon site, www.patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot. So the scene of this watercolour tutorial is Bruges in Belgium. And why Belgium? Well, uh, so I'm... I'm including bicycles in this video. So Belgium is a very popular cycling uh, country. Cycling is very popular in Belgium. And I think, uh, well, obviously you can see here, there's no bicycles. So we're going to have to invent them. Um, luckily, I do ride a bike from time to time, um, not on a regular basis. So hopefully I know what one looks like. And it's all about getting the proportions right, just trying to make it look like a bike um, in motion. Uh, and, and sometimes it can be easier than painting people because we, for example, we don't need to bother about legs too much. Um, they're busy twirling around um, in movement with the cyclist pedaling along. So this scene in Bruges in Belgium, I mean, the other interesting thing about this are these lovely um, stepped gable ends, these square gable ends here to the buildings, um, very typical of the architecture in this part of the world. I think these stepped gable ends here actually originated um, in Belgium and it's an easy way for people getting up on the roof and stepping up here, cleaning chimneys, repairing tiles, whatever. Anyway, so um, nice uh, stepped gable ends here will be an interesting exercise in perspective as well with all of these vertical lines here at an angle, trying to get that right, um, plus the windows as well. So I'm going to have a, a few bicycles going across the scene here. I'm um, going to have them going left to right. Um, three, three, three cyclists and uh, with some of the people milling around here in this sort of uh, busy, busy junction. So let's see how we get on. So the paper I'm using is Saunders Waterford uh, Cold Press, uh, which is the not surface, medium surface. It's 15 inches across by 11 inches down, so it's a quarter imperial size, and taped down at the sides uh, with some decorators masking tape. The pencil I'm using is a 3B pencil, so quite soft, and a very important stage this, getting the initial drawing right, particularly the stepped gable ends of this building here, pretty tricky. Um, 
So I'm just sort of drawing things in fairly lightly at the moment. And then, well, you saw me just put in the main angles of the roof and just put in these steps now. Up the left hand side. So just to help me line up these steps from one side to the other, I've just drawn in some faint lines and now it should be a little bit easier going down the right hand side just to make it look like a, a mirror image of the left hand side. And then the top of the roof. Just sloping down a little bit. Of course, with perspective, we're looking at it angle on. We're looking at the, the, uh, the, the corner towards us. So the roof's going to slope down a little bit to the right. and a couple of parasols which will again add a little bit more interest to this scene and also we've got a nice bit of contrast going on which works really well with watercolor trying to have light against dark or dark against light so that those light parasols there against the dark background that's probably um, in the middle the background building just where it joins the where it, it it butts up against the the light end of the uh, this cafe that's the darkest point so uh, and that's something we can emphasize in watercolor and capitalize on that Just get in the bottoms of the buildings, the street level. Two prominent windows at the front. So the background building will have a little bit less detail in it. So I'm not going to do every single window here, just a few of them. Now, the subject of our tutorial is uh, doing bicycles, drawing bicycles, painting bicycles. Uh, and so firstly, I'm, I'm loosely drawing in the wheels of the first bike. And it's not going to be a true circle. It's almost like an ellipse here because we're looking at them at a slight angle. So I've drawn the wheels first and then the cyclist last. I could have gone the other way around. I could have done the cyclist first and then um, put two wheels below the cyclist uh, in the right place. Do it that way around. And then just a, a rough indication of uh, the legs. So the body is almost like a triangle. Um, with the head on top, leaning slightly forwards. Uh, 
and bicycle number two and then another bicycle in front of that one so we're not going to make them equally spaced have this one slightly in front of that last cyclist again similar sort of pose leaning forwards hands the arms reaching the handlebars and then just very faintly drawing in where the shadows are going to be which don't need to be as precise as the um, the cyclist because we can't see the full details of it and they are in motion so um, they'll, they'll be sort of loosely loosely rendered now a couple of figures on the left hand side trying to think of getting some indication of movement in these figures walking towards us and we'll have some foreground shadows we've got this lovely tree uh, which you can see in my reference photo top left corner which is casting a shadow across the foreground so we'll have a, a couple of those couple of figures there connected to that shadow now I'm just going over these wheels again which is going to help me when I go over with the wash I can still see the outline of those wheels As you can see, I've not really bothered too much about details on the bike. It's mainly getting the two wheels right, the space between the wheels, the size of the wheels, um, and then um, getting the figure on top, just making it look like it's it's got the right proportions to the wheels. Um, and the, it, it, it looks it looks like they're riding the bike. So there are a few more figures to put in here. We'll get a few in smaller um, on the right hand side. And then if I think about having those figures lighter against the dark background, that should work quite well as well. Um, cafe, well, that's going to be loosely um, put in there's too many details there to be bothered with all the tables and chairs so we're just going to think about um, indicating that so that's our initial drawing done so the next step is doing the initial wash and the palette I'm using today is my quite limited travel palette and I've just got a blue which is uh, all of these colors I think they're from Sennelier so it's it's called a Cenarius blue um, a sort of a greeny blue and then I got a lemon yellow I've got Windsor red and a neutral tint in the bottom right corner so first of all with the sky brush I'm using is a Raphael brush uh, a mop brush with synthetic hairs and this is their size uh, I think it's a size six so very loosely with the sky the sky is a very small part of the picture so I don't need to spend a lot of time doing that 
very briefly, quickly put in. And now with the tops of the buildings, so the sky went right over the rooftop guidelines and uh, it's going to give me a bit of a soft edge between the two. So the that first roof was sort of quite red in colour and then the end, the gable end of this building in the middle that's going to catch the sunlight is a bit more sort of orangey, yellow ochre, if you like. So I'm gradually coming down. There's a slight slope on this board of about maybe 10%, 15%, just a slight term, a slight incline. So gradually come down, plenty of paint on the brush. And we will paint around some of these figures now as I come down. And it doesn't matter about leaving little bits unpainted. We can always make something of those. For example, uh, on that background building there, there's two little bits of, uh, or a few little bits of paper showing through. They could be made into um, a street light or some light hitting, hitting the side of a post or something like that. So carefully paint around the umbrellas outside the cafe. Down to street level. And the street itself, a little bit cooler. So I've added a bit of blue into that. Now try and connect up the background with the middle ground. Gradually come down, painting around some of these figures, things that will be lighter than their background. And those three on the far right side, again, they're going to be a bit lighter than their, their background. So you can see I'm actually lifting, I'm just taking paint from my palette and just very carefully dropping it into that wet wash, almost mixing it on the paper. And the, the Saunders Waterford paper, it's, um, it can take a fair amount of punishment. So you can be, with quite a stiff brush, you can be mixing stuff on your paper. It's not going to damage the surface of the paper. I don't need to worry too much about the immediate foreground because uh, the shadow will cover most of that. Now while it's all wet, we can do a bit of lifting out. Another little watercolour technique while um, an area is still damp or moist, we can with a tissue or a, a drier brush carefully lift out to make that area lighter. Timing is probably quite important there because you can't leave it uh, too long. Otherwise it'll be too dry and the lifting will be more difficult. OK, 
get in the old uh, frontis building. I think it's uh, a chimney or something. And that's the first wash done. Now I've got to let that dry 100% before going on to the next stage. So the next step is to go in with the darks. The uh, dark of the rooftops, the right hand side of that middle house. So a slightly smaller brush now. This is a Raphael number, uh, I think it's a number four. So for the dark rooftop at the back, I'm mixing a sort of half red, half blue, bit of neutral tint. Try and get the consistency right. along the roof up to the chimney and then down the right hand side of the chimney Not too precise. You can see that the edges aren't straight. Um, there's little imperfections there, which is part of the charm of a, a loose watercolor. And especially that small little stepped gable end there, I've really not pay too much attention to putting in precise steps, but just implying that it's there's a there's a jagged edge to it. However, I need to be a bit more precise with this near roof being and it's an important part of the picture, I'm trying to get this right, trying to do justice to the architecture of the region and just following those lines the gable end sort of sits proud it's a bit higher than the ridge of the roof and then go right over bottom of the roof and there are a few little background rooftops on the right hand side to the background building and the front, the front of the building. So I'm adding in a bit of yellow to the, the red. Just slightly, slightly warmer hue to it than the, uh, the roof. So 
just left a little bit of light there hitting that gable window coming out from the roof. Just a slither of light there. Likewise, on the stepped gable end, being careful to I'll come up against that uh, that front building. There. I need to be a bit careful going around those steps. And we can always use our finger when when things are, are still wet, just to smudge and merge things together to get a softer edge. Continue on down the building, getting a little bit darker as I come down to, to the bottom, which we can, which we can achieve by having less water in the mix, or maybe adding a little bit of neutral tint just to speed up the process. So as I said earlier, we need to be quite dark in this corner here where we've got the best, we've got the most contrast with that light umbrella. Continue on down. Don't worry about leaving little bits left unpainted. Carefully around the figures again. figure, that small figure in the background. So quite dark now around that first cyclist and around the front of the figure underneath the parasol Just a little bit of dark up against that second cyclist and the third cyclist. Maybe that's shadows on that cafe caused by the, created by the parasols. So the base of the building are going quite a bit dark here. You can see that I added some neutral tint to the blue for these shadows. Now it is quite dark on the pencil outline of the wheels, but I can still, it may not show up in the video, but I can still just about see the outline of those wheels that I drew in. Um, this will dry a little bit lighter, so it will become easier to see. So 
So the shady side of the cafe. And then up the other side. And like, like the background building, try and get a little bit dark, a bit more intense as we come down to the street level. to the three figures together. It doesn't matter for those background figures, I go over the outline a little bit. Not too precise. And shadows. So I've really just left their, their torsos unpainted. Don't worry too much about the legs. They're, they're, they're walking, they're in movement. So we can't, sometimes we can't always see if we looked at a figure for a split second, sometimes we can't see exactly where those, those legs are. They're not, um, they're not too evident. So uh, and I'm just picking up on a few little bits that just need to be covered up like the back of the um, the back of the neck of that first cyclist that just need a little bit more filling in so a smaller synthetic brush now and we're getting the some clothing of these figures so I'm going for a red top to this first cyclist, maybe a lighter, a lighter red for the third. And uh, a yellow, go with a yellowish color for the second cyclist. So now just getting in some faces. So I've mixed up a, a skin tint as best I can with my limited colors. Bit of shadow on the right hand side of the parasols, which will help with this second cyclist just to define the head a bit more. Next will be the foreground. So bigger brush, good bit of blue. And then in a fairly random fashion, because this is the, the shadow created by that overhanging tree, which I'll get in 
later. Let's get in the shadow first of all. Left a few little gaps here and there. All the way over, maybe getting a little bit lighter, a bit softer over to the right. So a bit more intense on the left, softer on the right. And lift with a paper towel, just lift off some of the edges to soften those up. That background building is still quite damp, so we can go in there and you don't want things to be looking too perfect really so that, that just helps um, add in a few imperfections which is part of the charm of watercolor to do that right two figures on the left that are coming towards us so as I normally do, painting their faces first of all, followed by some arms, maybe legs if they're wearing shorts or skirt, and then thinking about their clothing now, so a bit of a a blue number for this first figure. And legs joining with the shadows, which is still quite damp and they, they bleed in, blend in with each other. And then on with the second figure. Lighter top, darker, darker legs. Again, jo joining with the shadows, just with gravity, it's just blending in a little bit. Use the fingers, move things around a bit, or lift with a lift with a paper towel. And then these uh, three figures. Now they are quite distant from us, so I can't um, put too much detail into them. I'm just helping, helping that blending process going on here with a small synthetic brush, just while it's still quite damp. And then a bit of splattering, which I covered in a, a video not so long ago. So best done with a synthetic brush, I think. Bit of clear water. And timing is of the essence when uh, the, uh, the paint is still um, fairly damp, we can splash it away. So before I go in with any more detail work now, I do need to make sure everything is dry. So I've got a, I've got my little hair dryer out to speed up the process. And if the paper's um, gone a little bit, um, We've got some mounds appearing. Um, the drying process will flatten that paper out again, so we get a better, better flatter surface. And 
of course, with the with the uh, detail work, most important thing is going to be those wheels of the bicycles. So this is a small synthetic brush going around now fairly, fairly dry paint and just pick up a few architectural details. Those two main windows. I'm not even drawing a or painting a true rectangle there. It's just um, going in and painting some of the window, but it still looks like a window. So there's the, the gutters, we have a darker definition to where the, uh, the bottom of the roofs are. Um, so windows on the right hand side of the cafe. lower level and those lower le level windows they can be quite quite useful with figures in front of them just to add a bit more of a contrast with those figures you can see there with the the darker darker background those figures are beginning to show up a bit more Again, just indicating with a few brush strokes those windows. If I put too much detail into them, then people looking at this will just, their eyes will go to that, not to the intended cyclists. So we want to, we don't want to put too much effort into, into those windows. more dark into these two main windows and the window sills just te checking that that's dry now where I'm going to be putting in these wheels. A bit of hair would be a good idea. And 
round face. So we can just about see their faces. They're sort of slightly going away from us. Make the uh, the top a little bit darker, a bit redder. And face for cyclist number two and three. Now, these wheels, point of no return. <laughs> Try and with a, as steady a hand as I can, drawing the circles. Now, I'm not drawing the complete circle. I'm just leaving out a few little gaps here and there, which I tend to do. It just helps, this sort of lost and found technique just helps to give a sense of movement, but mentally we're joining up those. We know it's a wheel. Um, so it's, it's good to just leave out little little gaps here and there, not a complete line all the way around. And then just just the, the briefest of details for the bike frame, handlebars. And then repeat that for the rear wheel now, the third cyclist. And the back fork of the bike, that central bit. Notice I'm using all the proper bike terms. <laughs> that bit. Can't see a crossbar anyway, because there the figures are hiding those and to some extent the handlebars as well. I mean they're they're not close up so they're they're far enough away that we don't need to bother about too much detail with them. We do need some front forks. There we are just few little dabs here and there. And then once I've done the bikes, I need to get in their shadows. Which doesn't need to be as precise as the bicycles themselves. So just thinking about where the sun's coming from and the, the angle of these shadows. And then two wheels, the figure, that's all it needs. A bit of gentle smudging as well. It just sort of connects them with the ground so they're not too isolated and floating in midair. Just quickly drawn a shoulder strap for that 
first figure. And some faces for the three figures in the background. Just very briefly put in a few marks for the legs. Maybe a few shoulder straps. That little bit of smudging is probably going to help with a sense of movement as well. Next will be the tree in the top left corner. So I'll get a bigger brush for this. And Mix up, a, of course, a yellow and a blue. Now it's going to be a quite a darker green. So very roughly, just a few dabs here and there. Get in the the essence of this tree. We could also also um, do a bit of splattering as well as another effect. Join up that lighter bit with the darker bit above it. So there's a couple of a couple of effects for doing foliage a bit a, a bit of a dabbing stabbing sort of approach with a bigger brush a mop brush um, or in a in a control way a bit of splattering in different angles with a, a fully loaded brush Just make sure everything's dry here before I go in with a little bit of highlighting.
So I've got to put a, a sign on this cafe, which I think is a sort of gold color. I'm trying to, the closest I can get to that is a sort of greeny yellow. And not actually drawing in each of the letters, but just an impression of those letters. And I can add a bit of shadow behind those as well, just to um, make them stand out a bit more. Just give that a quick dry before I go in with some shadows behind them. Now for a bit of highlighting, I'm using uh, a white uh, gouache paint here, straight from the tube. And hopefully that instantly makes those figures pop out. Of course, a bit of highlighting around the wheel, the wheels that could be mud guards or something like that it's just catching the light not all the way around again a bit bit like the lost and found just just a few little sparkles here and there the uh center of the wheels Maybe just a few marks in that cafe as well. Um, tops of the shoulders of those two figures. It's careful, careful. You've got to be careful not to overdo it with the white gouache. It's a bit of a, it's almost like a sort of Marmite thing with watercolor some people frown on using um, body paint or um, you know white white uh, white paint Chinese white white gouache in this way other people think it's all part of watercolor um, in the fact that there's no rules as such just personal taste So those shadows I referred to before, you need to get some shadows in behind the lettering. Very quick. Thank you. 
and just now nearing the end of the painting and final final details just with a smaller brush the trick of course is knowing when to stop which I always have problems with I'm sure everyone else does maybe you have to when you when you think you're nearing there you stop and you you just evaluate what you've done and think is that enough have I have I got the essence of the scene um, and trying to be conscious and not overdoing it the temptation is to keep going and adding more detail I'm just going around the picture and just making a few little marks here and there that first that first cycle is getting plenty of smudging treatment from me I mean, you could do a lot of smudging if you if you wanted to give the impression of the cyclist moving quite fast through the scene. Um, perhaps minor going along fairly slowly, fairly sedately, <laughs> being a pedestrian area. Um, so another thing I'm doing here, which I quite often do, with a dry brush and a small brush just make a few marks to help with the perspective and leading the eye into the picture of course if you're drawing a street scene this will be quite easy because it could be the side of the street um, pavements um, road markings pedestrian crossings that are doing that for you or you can just invent them. That background figure is just a little bit too light, so I just need to tone it down a level or two. Let's get some stripes on that middle figure. bit more detail to the two figures with some darker skin tone So a horizontal line across that building at the back. Final, final details. And that is about it. So we'll now go on to a quick um, summary of what we've done.
So just to summarize, the scene was Bruges in Belgium and the subject trying to introduce cyclists into your scene. Um, so here we've got a busy pedestrian scene, lots of figures, nice cafe, the interesting architecture in Bruges, these stepped gable ends here. And we imagine these cyclists um, going through the scene from left to right. So here's the finished painting. Um, and with these cyclists, think about shapes again. So for example, for me, I just simplify the, 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 the top part of the figure to a triangle almost. Uh, we've got the, the back there and then we've got the, the next side of the triangle would be down to the handlebars and then we're going across to the saddle. Um, very, very brief shape, nothing, hardly anything to the legs as, at all. They're very briefly done. And then the wheels, uh, because this, these cyclists are going away from us, there's more of an ellipse going on here rather than a true circle. Think about proportions as well. So the distance from the hub to the rim is almost the same again to the left hand edge of the next wheel. So, so that distance there is the same, those three air those those three dimensions are almost almost identical and very brief shadows as well to those figures maybe have some cyclists um their their shapes it's connecting with each other uh does help as well so here's another painting i did uh not too long ago but this is going the other way but the my my method of doing it is exactly the same. Uh, you can see here the triangle of the figure, bit of smudging going on, um, just to give that sense of movement. A lot of these figures, they're being lost into the dark background, bit of highlighting around the wheels as well. Not too much detail to the bikes. We can't see anything at all, forks, um, the, the rear the rear mechanism there almost disappearing. As an end note, uh, thank you very much to all of my patrons who are helping me continue to make these videos. Uh, thank you very much indeed. I do appreciate your support. If you want to find out more about how to support me and gain access to exclusive content, extra tips around watercolor and also um, quite unique a personal critique from me I, I will set uh, little painting projects from time to time and you can get a personal critique from me more details please go up to patreon.com uh, slash Tim Wilmot and get more information about me and see loads more pictures up on my website timwilmot.com so thanks very much for watching and look forward to speaking with you next time.